Excel tutorial Exponential Smoothing Methods. Exponential smoothing methods consist of forecasts based on previous periods data with exponentially decaying influence the older they become. Their notation is ETS, which stands for Error, Trend and Seasonality, where each can be non, additive, additive damped, multiplicative or multiplicative damped. This topic is part of forecasting models with Excel curves. Feel free to take a look at Curse Curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of the video. An example of exponential smoothing method is Brown Simple Exponential Smoothing which consists of forecasts with no trend or seasonal patterns. For full reference, I recommend that you read Robert Brown, Exponential Smoothing for Predicting Demand, published by Arthur D. Little, Inc. in 1956. Its ETS notation is ANN, in which error is additive, there is no trend and no seasonality. As a formula, current period forecast is equal to previous period's level forecast. Previous periods level forecast in turn is equal to an alpha level smoothing coefficient multiplied by previous periods data plus 1 minus alpha multiplied by second previous periods level forecast. Alpha level smoothing coefficient is a value between 0 and 1. Great, so let's go into our Excel file so that we can study Brown simple exponential smoothing with greater detail. Excellent. So here we are within the Excel file. The first step within the tutorial is to do Brown Simple Exponential Smoothing Training, which is done within its corresponding worksheet. The objective of this worksheet is to do the optimal parameter estimation of alpha level smoothing coefficient. For that we begin first with these two columns, which is date and then column C with its associated data. Date, as we can see here, it begins at the beginning of 2007, and if we press Ctrl down arrow, it goes all the way to the end of 2013. So again, we press Ctrl up arrow and down arrow. So here we have seven years of data, which is YT. YT corresponds to SPY adjusted close prices. SPY is the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index. Adjusted close prices because they were adjusted for dividends and splits. So as mentioned, here we have daily data, and as an example here, we are using the first seven years of data as a training range. The full time series we are using for this tutorial has nine years, therefore we'll be using the last two years also as an example as testing range. So the next step here is to do the corresponding forecast. As we can see here within the formula, the forecast of current period is equal to previous period's level forecast. For this, we need to do initial assumptions regarding initial previous periods level and initial current period forecasts, which in this case, by selecting here cells D7 and E7 and looking at their formula bars, we see that they're equal to C7, which is the actual data. So this is the assumption for those initial values of previous periods and current period forecasts. Regarding that current period forecast, when we select the next row, in this case, that E8, we see that it's equal to, as it formula indicates, previous periods level forecast as D7. And regarding that corresponding previous periods level forecast, in this case, it's equal to, and then we have F2, which is that alpha level smoothing coefficient, and notice that it has dollar signs before the column, before the row, which is done by pressing F4 on the keyboard, and what that does is that it fixes that cell, so when we copy the formula down, it remains that cell for all the column. We multiply that by C8, which in relation to next row's current period forecast is equal to previous period's data, plus one minus alpha, again, being fixed in number of columns and in rows as well by pressing F4 on the keyboard, 
which adds the dollar signs here, and we multiply it and here by D7, which in relation to next row current period forecast, it is equal to second previous period's level forecast, and so on for the rest of the column. Then we calculate forecasting errors or residuals. For example, we select F7, and we see that it's equal to the difference between C7, which is the actual data, minus the forecasted data. With this, we calculate SSE, or the sum of square errors. So by selecting cell F3, we see within the formula bar that it's equal to the sum, built-in Excel function, from cells F7 to F1768, and then to the power of 2. As we're doing calculation within the calculation, this needs to be done through an array. So once we input the formula, instead of pressing the Enter key on the keyboard, we press Ctrl Shift Enter and double check with Kirby brackets at the beginning and at the end of the calculation. The reason we calculate this sum of square errors, it's because that's the objective of the optimization with which we do the estimation of alpha level smoothing coefficient. We want to minimize this sum of square errors by changing this alpha level smoothing coefficient and that coefficient being constrained between 0 and 1. This optimization was already done before recording this video tutorial and it was done using Excel Solver. Excel Solver is found within that data tab here, specifically Analyze Solver Excel Add-in. Excellent. So now that we've already estimated the alpha level smoothing coefficient, the next step is to do Brown Simple Exponential Smoothing Testing. So we go into its corresponding worksheet, and within it, again, we start with columns B and C, B with dates, in this case, at the beginning of 2014, which is one business day after the end of 2013, we press Ctrl down arrow, it goes all the way to the end of 2015. So again, we press Ctrl up and then down arrow. So as mentioned previously, the full time series is nine years of data. As an example, we divided it into a training range, the first seven years and the last two as a testing range. Then we have YT, SPY adjusted close prices for their corresponding dates. And then we have H. H is the number of steps for which we're doing the multi-step forecast. That's a sequence from one to the number of observations. And then we do the corresponding multi-step forecast. This multi-step forecast is done at the beginning of the testing range for the full testing range in advance without re-estimating that training range parameters. So the first multi-step forecast with the formula bar, we know that the current forecast is equal to previous periods level forecast. Therefore, that initial current forecast is equal to Brown Simple Exponential Smoothing Training Worksheet, specifically column D and row 1768. So we go into Brown Simple Exponential Smoothing Training and at column D, we select D7, press Ctrl down arrow. So we go into the end of the column and we see that that was the last previous period's level forecast at that cell D1768. So we go back into Brown Simple Exponential Smoothing Testing and from the second row onwards, we see that it's equal to previous period's forecast. Therefore, in this case, as we know, this corresponding forecast, which is equal to previous period's forecast, and that in turn is equal to the last previous period's level forecast, and so on. So this corresponding brown simple exponential smoothing multi-step forecast, it's going to be a horizontal line. So here we have forecasting errors or residuals. Like by selecting F7, we see that there's a difference between the actual data at column C7, and then here minus the forecast, which is E7. And the last step is we're going to go into Brown Simple Exponential Smoothing Chart here, and we are going to visualize it. Notice its title, which is Brown Simple Exponential Smoothing Method with its ETS notation, ANN, additive error, no trend, no seasonality. On the vertical axis, we have prices. On the horizontal one, we have dates, from the beginning of 2014 to the end of 2015. Therefore, this is only for the testing range. And we have two time series. According to their legend, which we can see right here, colored in blue, that's the actual data within this testing range. And colored in orange, we have Brown Simple Exponential Smoothing Multi-Step Forecast, which has mentioned. It was done at the beginning of the testing range for the full testing range in advance. And it was done using the optimal parameter estimation from the training range without those optimal parameters re-estimation.
Excellent. So let's go back into our slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.